At 530, lead plaintiff Elizabeth Hines took the stand today in Charlottesville, crying within minutes of beginning her testimony. The then law student, now practicing lawyer, told the jury that she witnessed both the Tiki Torch March and the Unite the Right rally. And she also saw James Fields' car flying down the road. And she said that she first believed it was on accident until the car actually went in reverse. Then she thought that he was trying to, quote, kill as many people as possible, end quote. Well, today, our legal correspondent, Seema Iyer, was one of just a handful of reporters inside the courtroom. She joins us now live outside of that courthouse in Charlottesville. And Seema, another defendant is on the stand right now, Jeff Scoop. And before he even began, the plaintiff's lawyers asked for him to be declared a hostile witness. And this is something you might expect to see in a TV show, but how does this really work yeah. in real life, Seema? Well, it didn't work the way it usually works in real life because in real life what usually happens is you start questioning a witness and then they start saying things that are antagonistic to your legal position. So you have to ask the judge for permission to declare them hostile or what we call adverse. But in this case, before Jeff Scoop even took the stand, they asked for him to be declared a hostile witness. And let me tell you, he was hostile from the jump. If he just would not answer a question. It was like being at the dentist's office, watching someone pull teeth. But the benefit, this is the major benefit of having a witness declared hostile, because you've heard this objection, objection leading, right? So you cannot lead a witness on direct. When it's your witness, you can't lead. But when someone's hostile, you can lead, and then it becomes more like a cross-examination. So for instance, let's say I was asking, I don't know, Cam Newton a question. And I said, hey, Cam, what team are you signing with? That is not a leading question. But if I said, hey, Cam, are you signing with the Carolina Panthers? That, my friends, is a leading question. And finally, I will leave you at this. At the end of the day, I, I, I just could not believe what I was watching. He was, uh, Scoop was being asked about a video that was, that he was in, and he refused repeatedly to say, that is me in the video. And the judge, everybody was getting incredibly frustrated, guys. It was a rough day in court, and Elizabeth Signs just started it off so emotionally. It was such a tough day uh, here in Charlottesville, guys. Yeah, I have a great analogy when it comes to I totally understand that. Thanks for kind of breaking that down. But we also, we know You're the judge, welcome. thank you. We also know that the judge has wanted to really move this trial along, but there's been a lot of testimony to go through. Yeah, we're looking at week three wrapping up today on this Friday. What can we expect next week? Okay. I hate to break it down, but uh, the plaintiffs have still not rested their case. So we are still on the plaintiff's case. So that's one issue that is pending. The other issue is that we are expecting Chris Cantwell to play a two hour video, two hours. I'm not sure what this is, but that's what's on the table. Now, the battle that we are all really gearing up for, and that is between Richard Spencer, who's a co-defendant, and the lead defendant, Jason Kessler. Let me just give you a little background. Jason Kessler has not been in the courtroom. He has a lawyer here, but he has been live tweeting the trial. So last night, I saw a tweet of his that was basically putting Richard Spencer on blast and giving his followers some indication that maybe he would testify and hurt Richard Spencer. Well, today, I tried to get that tweet so we could play it tonight on our program, but he has self-deleted himself from Twitter, which I did corroborate from the plaintiff's lawyers in the courtroom, and I believe that he's done that because... Uh, Maybe his lawyers told him, you're about to testify Monday. So that's what's on, on deck for Monday. Spencer versus Kessler, get ready for it. It is going to be brutal. These are two white supremacist leaders of the movement, guys. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a good one. We look forward to having that coming up on Monday. We'll sit on it all weekend long. Seema Iyer, thank you so much for joining us and giving us the latest as the trial wraps up. It's th third week. And there's still so much to be able to process left in this trial. Fox 46 chief legal correspondent Seema Iyer is only one of a handful of journalists from across the country allowed inside the courtroom for the Unite the Right trial. She will continue to bring us exclusive new details from inside the courtroom throughout the trial right here on Fox 46 News.